Uh, can you hear me now? I think it is okay now. Thank you for warning me. Uh, I forget it uh, muted. Or when I mute everyone, I mute myself. I don't know. Okay. So uh, let me to start over. In in round robin algorithm, the first thing is to check which process is arrived first. I mean, I will check the arrival time, okay? So this one is first. It came in time zero. So I have to put process four in the beginning, okay? How much time? Two nanoseconds because uh, the time quantum uh, is two units. Uh, as I told you in previous lecture, um, I'm not going to give you two units at this uh, burst times because as you see, it uh, takes, it will take so much time. Okay, and after that, so this one was in memory and it will execute two nanoseconds and finished execution. But this will put in the memory back again. Why? Because it has six nanoseconds and it didn't finish yet. Uh, execution. So it has four nanoseconds to uh, go. I have to check before putting it in somewhere of memory, which processes is a right when time is two. When time is two, uh, process five is a right and process three is a right. Okay. So I have to put here process five. Process three. And then I will put process four. Okay. Here I put uh, four nanoseconds, not to forget uh, how much nanosecond process four uh, remains okay this the reason is i put here because it is not started from the beginning it executed once to not to forget i put four nanoseconds okay as i told you the order of execution is in this way so next one will be process five so process five will be executed again, uh, two nanoseconds. So from two to four, again, uh, process five is three nanoseconds. So when it executed two nanoseconds, one nanosecond remains. So what does it mean? I have to put it back to memory. But when it is finished execution, what is the time? Time is four. So I have to check if any other process comes after uh, till time is four. Process one is arrived. So I have to put process one and then I have to put process five, okay? Okay, I will solve, uh, someone asked me another problem. Um, 
and process one process five, uh, one remains sorry process five remains one nanoseconds okay I am writing just not to forget. So this one is finished execution. The next one is process three. Uh, process three will execute two nanoseconds. So time is six now. Okay, then Then I have to check if there is any other process comes before P3 because P3 is seven nanoseconds. So if I execute two, I have remaining five nanoseconds. So I have to put it back to memory. So um, here I have to check if some other process comes before uh, process uh, three put back to the memory again. Um, and process two came, okay? So process two came, so I have to write here uh, process two, okay? And then I have to put this one finished here, process three. I put it back to memory. So it has five nanoseconds remaining. Okay. So what is the next thing to do? I have to execute process four, which it is four nanosecond process four. We, I have left uh, after this, time is eight, and this has two nanoseconds. So I don't need to check but uh, anymore because all processes are arrived. So I don't need to check uh, anymore if any other processes arrive. So I can directly put process four after this one, after the uh, last waiting process. And I have to write, I mean, two nanoseconds left. Not to forget, okay? This here. After that, I have to execute process one. Two nanoseconds. Okay, so process one remains. Process one was nine nanoseconds. It has remaining uh, seven nanoseconds here. Then process five. And process five is finished because I have. Uh, one nanosecond to go. That's why it is from 10 to 11, one nanosecond. Then process two, and it goes like that, okay? The hardest part is in the beginning until all these processes are arrived. It is a little bit complicated, but the rest of the thing is just, you are uh, just executing if, it has remaining time, you have to put it back to the memory. Executing, if they have remaining time, you have to put it back memory after the last process, last waiting process. Okay, so uh, as I told you, I will send the better version of this. So I did several times. I will ask one question, please check it alone or with your friends. Um, another friend asked me a question. 
actually I was trying to say this one, but uh, I didn't see it at that time. Okay. So, uh, actually, this question is um, same question that we are uh, trying to find the uh, utilization of CPU. But here, there is one little difference. Here, I didn't give you um, the input output time in percentage. I gave you CPU burst time and input output time. So CPU burst time So CPU burst time is the total time that used both in CPU and input output. So if it is eight nanoseconds and uh, two nanoseconds of it, is in uh, used in input output. How you can find it in? Uh, right. How we can find it? Actually, you can do it like that. Two over eight. Multiply by hundred is uh, one over four twenty five percentage or two over four, eight is equal to one over four which is equal to 0 0.25. And you can just uh, write it as 25 percentage. So actually it is saying that 25 percentage uh, of a process execution is used for input output. So if I ask this kind of question, you have to divide this one to this one, okay? Input output time to burst time to find how many percentage of the um, CPU burst time is used for input output. And when you find 0 0.25, you have to use the formula one minus P over N. Or let me to write uh, by hand one minus P over N. Okay. So I found P 
here, 0 0.25. What is N? Six divided by three, N is two. So result will be one minus uh, 0 0.25. I can't draw uh, dot over two. Okay, square off. So it is same question, but asked in different logic. Okay, Tracy, uh, Tracy asked me, <laughs> it is like uh, the programs in radio that uh, the listeners connect and ask for any song, just play me this song like that. So uh, she asked me if I can just uh, ask shortest job first and uh, first come first served and leave round robin so um let me to say like that okay i will do it like that i will say okay do it do round robin okay or um shortest job first or uh, first come first third so you you have two options you will have two options either uh, use round robin to solve the problem or solve it in two or the thing is um, for the For the shortest job first. Okay, I will do it optional. Uh, you will see. Okay, it will be optional. Okay, let's do it like this. Yes. Uh, okay. So let me to go back to. The slides, I mean, the what else we have? Okay, another question, um, is related to compaction think about that we have 10 megabyte of memory Ten. okay so uh, the first one is asking the advantage of compaction so I will give a better version as I told you. Uh, let me to write it. What was the uh, advantage of compaction? By using compaction, we have more contiguous space because it is always just separating the used parts and the holes or empty parts. So this is the advantage by applying this technique. Uh, we can have, we can fit there, put bigger processes um, in memory because we have more contiguous space. 
And I just asked, uh, okay, three megabytes of memory is coming, uh, process coming, and two megabytes of process coming to uh, there. So if it is 10 megabytes of memory, you have to just just put them in the first place, the second place, and this is my empty space. Okay. So if I say another process comes, for example, uh, three megabytes. Let's say another process comes. Three megabyte of process comes here, then two megabyte comes. And let's, uh, let's say the third process comes. So you have to uh, draw it like this. If I say to draw it or illustrate. So three, two, and three in compaction. And here I have remaining two megabytes. Three. Okay, so let's say, uh, let's say this one is finished execution, okay? So this is remains. So what will happen in this case? I have to put this tree after that, okay? And still I have uh, four megabytes of contiguous space. So this is how compaction works. Okay. I told you that uh, I will ask um, that no question. It will be bonus. Just, um, there is another question I will not tell uh, to you, but from that log, it is related to that log, but from that log, I will ask what is that log and what are the four um, conditions for that log? Okay, mutual exclusion, hold and wait no preemption and circular weight. Please check this one. I will ask, okay? Also the explanation, uh, I think um, I gave it to you. So just check this one. This, this will be bonus question, uh, but I will ask this part. Also, um, in in assignment questions, um, question eleven and question uh, twenty three. Uh, please check them. I'm not going to solve because I solved them in the class. Same questions. Uh, please check them from from question one type of questions you are not responsible uh, also let me to write to group um, just one second to write to group.
and also uh, um question one type of questions i mean um the life cycles i'm not going to ask i asked him in, in midterm so i am not going to ask and um synchronization there is there was one question related to synchronization uh you are not responsible as well in the final i told you before but um uh, i asked in the um uh, questions assignment questions so if you're removing in assignment and quiz um, in quiz yes uh, more or less similar questions will come uh, in assignments assignment that i gave you um the i mean question one type of question will not come and also synchronization will not come all the others are very uh, important okay worst fit yes uh i will not ask same questions true false i think uh from maybe some of them i don't know um uh, question 24 was what let me to check from assignment question 24 ah yes uh, sorry about that uh, question 24 will not come let me to write that one as well We didn't do that. Uh, I think I. It is a continuation of uh, memory management. Uh, I didn't uh, cover that. So, um, link this and verse fit. Uh, let's do it. Okay, I have several pen uh, windows open. I'm trying to find. Uh... Okay. Okay, link this. I also uh, sold. It is very easy. Um, let me to just uh... okay. In link this, how you can what is question eleven? Okay, let me to solve this one and uh, then uh, that one. Okay, in link this P is what? Uh, P is process. Um, H is whole. Okay. So, uh, what does this mean? It means from zero to 99. Okay. 
um, the process is uh, this uh, memory is filled by a process. So if I give you this and want to uh, illustrate it, you have to say from zero to 99, we have process, okay? So then whole from 100 to 199. So 100 to 199. It is whole. So uh, you can feel it like that. Then process again from 200 to 299. Okay. And whole again from 300 to 399. Oops. You are showing the starting and the end points. So just you have to draw it like that. But uh, let me to give you uh, another example here. Think about that. If this process is finished execution, like this. So uh, you don't need to write, I mean, process, whole, and whole. This link will go like that first. Actually, this one and this one will uh combine so it will be a process from 0 to 99 and a whole from uh, 100 to 399 Okay, so this will be like this. Okay, and someone asked me another. What was it? Uh, question 11. Let me to check. I, I take note. Uh, before the lecture, I said question 11, but really, I don't know what is it uh, about. Just one second to check it. I don't use, I think, two ways to do it. Uh, there is best fit, worst fit. Algorithm. So not a different way. If you use best fit, you should find the first available uh, no, uh, when you use best fit, you have to check whole memory and find the smallest available space. I mean, that your process can fit. When you use worst fit, in this case, you will search all the memory and find the uh, biggest space to uh, put your memory.
if you use first fit, you have to put the first available space. Okay, this is the difference. Okay, uh, this lecture is also finished. Uh, so 